<laughs> What's up guys, this is the Gospel According to Mark with a C. He is I, and I am he. Just taking some time to tell you what's on my mind. And uh, first and foremost, I want to thank everybody who showed love on that last video uh, with me and Xavier, my son. Um, you guys had some like really wonderful, supportive things to say. And um, you know, it was my pleasure to be able to let him read the comments. You know, because when you put yourself out there, you just never know what you're going to get. And, um, you know, this has been the point that we've been trying to make all this time. You know, about the Kelly Marie Tran, about the Ahmed Best thing. The internet can be sometimes a very cruel, harsh, cold environment. So when you share with people and you put things out there and you make yourself vulnerable, well, you can expect some people are going to chop you down. So, you know, I really didn't know what was going to happen. I just know that, you know, I've been off from work, uh, you know, just taking a little time off. And, um, you know, Xavier wanted to do a video with me since we saw Ant-Man. So, normally I'm kind of like, I don't know about that. But, you know, I caved in and uh, let him do it. And uh, thank you guys so, so much for uh, making his day. You know, I was able to let him read the comments and he was reading them out loud. And it's just, um, it really warmed my heart, you know, to see him happy and, you know, to see him proud of himself. So, thank you guys. You know, hats off to you guys. Thank you so much. And, um... Anyway, I want to go on and I want to weigh in on this um, Billy D. Williams is coming back to uh, Star Wars, you know, for uh, Episode 9 business. Um, you know, the rumors, they were swirling around for a while and now all these articles are out and um, they seem to be pointing to a confirmation that Billy D. Williams will be returning to the role of Lando Calrissian in Episode 9. Now, you know, listen guys, I this is not something that <laughs> you know, makes me all giddy, you know, with happiness and everything. Because honestly, why? You know, like, what is this all about? How is this serving the story? The character of Lando Calrissian is literally coming into a story where he does not belong. In the words of uh, Kylo Ren, he has no place in the story. None. Nobody knows him, you know, besides uh, Chewbacca, you know, and maybe R2 and C3PO, you know, the droids. You know what I mean? But as far as everybody else you know Han is gone Luke is gone and as far as I know I don't know if Luke is if he can be perceived as a force ghost by somebody who does not wield the force I don't know because at the end of Return of the Jedi when he's looking at force ghost Yoda and force ghost Ben and force ghost Anakin he's looking at them but you have a whole party of people who are like not looking at them who don't even perceive them so who is Lando going to play off of that would know him or respect him? You know, there is nobody. Like I said, besides maybe Chewbacca or something like that. And I'm sorry, that's not worth it. There's no payoff in this. You know, and um, Lando or Billy D. Williams, I warned you, my friend. I warned you with all due respect. I told you stay away from this, Billy D. But no! 80-something-year-old Billy D. Williams is in the gym. This could be the death of you, Billy D. I'm telling you, watch yourself. You know what I mean? But here it is, you know, letting these people use you to clean up the shit that Ryan Johnson shoveled onto the world. The big pooper scooper that he is. You know, so here you are, Billy D. Williams, being pulled back into this, you know, um, and I, see, here's the thing, all right? I hear a lot of people saying that, you know, and I said it myself too, that they're gonna pull you in to disrespect you and to possibly kill you in the most disrespectful way. And this is still possible, but you know, on second thought, I thought to myself, I said to myself, I says, I says to myself, I says, Mark, I says, this is the social justice warrior, Lucasfilm, Star Wars. You know what I mean? So, because Billy D. Williams is a colored man, a black, he's a black man, he's black. So it means that he's gonna get special treatment. You know what I'm saying? Now this isn't something that I condone. This isn't something that I recommend or something that I am asking for, but it just so happens that this is the way these people think. They see race and color before anything else. So this could be part of a grand scheme also, you know, to put Billy D out front so anyone who has something to say about it, well, I can see the articles now. You know, a uh, uh, toxic racist Star Wars fandom in an uproar because Billy D. Williams is is in the movie, or Billy D. Williams is not being uh, killed the same way as Han and Luke, and you know, it's just it's a mess. You know what I mean? It's a manipulative, disgusting mess. And personally, 
I don't need it. I I I don't appreciate it. You know what I mean? It's like as a as a uh, uh, as a as a so-called black man. Okay, I don't appreciate it. Why do I say so-called? Because I value myself as a human being. All right, I am very very proud of who I am. I'm proud of who I come from. All right, but the point is is that I will not be marginalized, especially by people like this. All right, I have the right to be who I am as a human being. All right, but since these people, all they see is is race and color, they're gonna use this. All right, so Billy D. Williams could be coming back to be like the ultimate. This could be Star Wars: Return of the Kang. You know what I'm saying? I just I don't know, but I don't trust these people. Is my point? You know what I mean? It's like all I want to see, all I wanted to see, were good characters represented in the best way possible. All right. Having them come back one by one. First we got Han, Chewie, we're home. All right, then we got uh, Leia, or maybe Leia came first. Then at the end of the movie we got Luke. Then Luke spends a whole movie, go away. It's no wonder the toys didn't sell. Can you see it now? Uh, the Last Jedi, Luke Skywalker, you press his little tummy and his arm goes up and throws the lightsaber over his back. You know, you press his tummy, his arm throws the lightsaber. Lightsaber action Luke. Throws the lightsaber over his shoulder. Press the tummy, go away. Go away. Go away. <laughs> I don't think any kid's going to be breaking down the door for some shit like that. Okay? So anyway, going on. Like I said, Billy D. Williams in the new Star Wars. Um, no. It's not going to work, guys. Alright? So here I am to say it. It's like everybody can dump on me if they want. You know, you the Star Wars fans. They're impossible to please. Look, you made a mistake. Okay? You made a mistake. You made it years ago with The Force Awakens. And I told you guys that I appreciated The Force Awakens. Me and my son had a great time watching it. He loved Finn. I told this story a million times. But the point is, is that that's where the mistake began to be made. It's like, I remember uh, The Force Awakens, it started so strong. It's like, I remember the audience that I was sitting with, uh, the audience that I was sitting there in the theater, and um, when Kylo Ren stopped that blaster in midair, the audience actually said, ooh. And I was like, oh my God, here we go. I'm reaching for the seatbelts, and there weren't any seatbelts, you know, but I just knew we was in for some shit, you know what I mean? But no, probably about maybe 45 minutes in, I started saying to myself, I can't believe this. They're doing the same exact thing that they were doing in, in A New Hope. You know what I'm saying? They're ripping off A New Hope. But because my son had such a, a fun time with it, and Ray and Finn actually did show some chem chemistry, you know what I mean? I felt like, okay, The Force Awakens, I'll put up with it because the next one is probably going to be its own thing. You know, it's not going to rip off any of the original trilogy, and it's going to be a great movie. You know what I mean? Even though I was thoroughly disappointed that uh, Han Solo got killed in that movie. Yes, I know that Harrison Ford wanted the character to die, but of all the billions of ways, it's like doc when Doctor Strange says in Infinity War, of all the millions of ways, this is the one that it had to be. Of all the millions of ways that Han Solo could have died, that is the one way, the one way that he shouldn't have died. And they chose it. You know what I mean? And of all the millions of scenarios that could have happened in the following movie, after The Force Awakens, of all the millions of ways they could have taken the story, Ryan Johnson managed to nose booger pick the one way that he shouldn't have. You know what I mean? And now we have to live with it because there's no going back. Han Solo is dead, Luke is going to be a Force Ghost perhaps, and Carrie Fisher is gone in real life. You know what I mean? It is gone. It's like the crossroads have crossed and now we're in totally different directions. You know what I mean? There's no getting it back. And this is the reason why so many of us feel as strongly as we do about it. It's not that hard to figure out. You know, so for everybody who is demonizing the fandom for pointing things like this out, in the future, you will understand what this is about. The future will judge this new trilogy to be an utter failure. I don't care how much money you're making. All of the new uh, articles that are coming out, you know, that are talking about how The Last Jedi made such and such amount of money so it must be good. No, no. It made that much amount of money because we all went in there to see Luke. All right? And once we realized we weren't going to see Luke the way that we were going to, that's when you saw the profits plunge. All right? It's not that hard to understand. Ryan Johnson is not some wonder kid. Okay? So... 
that's what this is all about. You know, so now with all the cleanup that these people are trying to do, they want to drag in Billy D. Williams. And Billy D. Williams, look, I'm happy that you're going to be getting a payday. Okay, I'm happy that you're going to get a payday. Fine. You know, but story wise, there is no way in hell that Billy D. Williams' character of Lando Calrissian belongs in this story. No way whatsoever. As a matter of fact, when he steps on screen, it's going to take most people out of the movie because all they're going to be thinking about is oh that's the guy who played the original lando that's billy d williams they got billy d williams in here it's stunt casting he was supposed to be playing off of han luke and leia he's a supporting character a strong supporting character an iconic supporting character but a supporting character nonetheless who's lost every single person that he was drawn as a character to support so no None of this makes me excited. None of this makes me happy, except for the fact that Billy D. Williams is going to get a paycheck. But at the same time, Billy D. Williams, I know you've had health concerns. Please be careful with this new grueling schedule. Please, don't let these people use you up and then throw you away. And don't, and please, if you can help it, please don't let them put you out front because that's the way it seems like to me. Right now it seems like they're, they're holding you in front of them and they're trying to find their way out the door. You know what I mean? They already know they fucked up, but now they're going to hold you in front like a hostage and they're going to use you as a shield so nobody can make a, a criticism because they've already made it perfectly clear they don't want people criticizing them anymore. Okay? At least not negatively. I never heard one complaint about people who rave over their nonsense. Yes, give me accolades. Give me, show me love. Give me body. Give me body. It reminds me of uh, Joaquin Phoenix in, um, in, in Gladiator. He just wants the love and the adoration and anybody who has anything else to say about it off with their heads. But this, it doesn't work that way. All right, this is 2018. It's like people have the right to express how they feel about art. I just took my son to the uh, museum, the art museum, uh, what was it, two weeks ago. You know what I mean? These people have made these works of art, statues, paintings, sculptures, you know, things like that. And they put them out there for the ages, for people to sit there and, and critique and, and to think about and everything. Now, what if every artist sat next to their painting as you're looking at it, and anytime you have something to say that they don't like, they want to argue with you. It's like, that's what we've come to with the motion picture industry right now. That's what it's come to with the Star Wars saga right now. It's like, we can't say anything that's critical and it's not uh, uh, flattering to their so-called art without freaking Ryan Johnson or, or one of his little ass little berries hanging out, you know, who come after us talking about what we can and what we can't say and how you must be toxic. Get out of here. I'm not going for it. And I'm not going for episode nine. I don't care who you cast. It's not going to work for me. You know, so Billy D, like I said, get your money. I can't be mad at you. You know, but for everybody else, you know, who's involved in this train wreck, I see it for what it is. You won't be getting a dime of my money. As long as the disrespect continues the way it's been continuing and the pushback keeps on going the way it's been, you can forget about it from me. So, uh, yeah, anyway, guys, that's the way I feel about the news that Billy D. Williams is returning to the Star Wars saga through Episode 9. All right, so, uh, you know, here we go, guys. Anyway, let me know how you feel in the comment section. Hope all is well. This is the Gospel According to Mark with a C. Catch you on the next one. Rock on!